action. Hey everyone, back in Chicago. You know, it's only a mile or less to Lake Michigan. I walked over there yesterday. It was really nice. Yeah, the, I the love magnificent that. mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. love that big lake. Yeah. But uh, today, Mohan, we're talking about plugins. Yeah. And Mohan is Mohan Atreya. You are a Senior Vice President of Product and Solutions at mm -hmm. Rafe. That's right. Can you tell us a little bit about Rafe? Sure. So we primarily help platform teams uh, build and develop automation for self-service experiences for their application teams and other teams uh, who are consumers of the platform teams. And we do this with uh, the ability to put the right controls around it. And uh, in, in the end, what these platform teams get is a highly efficient uh, platform for application teams to build, deploy, and operate their applications um, okay. uh, organization-wide. Yeah. Okay. And so... You're a big adopter of Backstage. That's right. Yeah. And um, I I don't know if you have seen it but or listened to it, but I'm going to make a little pitch. This guy does great podcasts. It's the Co-Recursive Coding mm. Stories. Mm. And he did a really long interview and discussion with a woman from Spotify. Mm. And how when they face their IPO, mm. IPO deadline, mm. suddenly the, the auditors from Ernst & Young said, you know, I don't know what the heck's going on, but you have all kinds of potential vulnerabilities here mm. because your every team mm. basically has their own CI mm. and they're using Jenkins mm. and it's just like a plug-in, mm. you know, nest, mm. right? And so she had to go around mm -hmm. and talk to all these senior engineers, mm -hmm. almost like she felt like she was a junior engineer, mm -hmm. like saying, hey, did you do this API? Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was they were coding so fast mm -hmm. that the maintainers couldn't keep up, mm -hmm. right? So you had all these scripts and everything else. And that to me mm -hmm. seems like the essence of platform engineering. That's right. Like yeah. to help mollify these, mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. environments, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious on the plugin architecture for Backstage itself because Jenkins is a plugin architecture, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So how are you building plugins, mm, mm, you know, yeah. for Backstage? Yeah. How do you keep them, you know, from sprawling to, mm. you know, every corner yeah. of the universe? Yeah. And what is the value then that brings? And sure, so maybe absolutely. we can see that through the demo. Yeah, absolutely. So at a high level, uh, I think the message that we consistently hear from our customers and all kind of users of the platform is they have kind of, many of them are standardized on Backstage as this single place where the developers can go to because they like the consistency and experience because yeah, I can learn from each other. I can, I don't have to go train people on how to do things. It becomes familiar territory for, for yeah. developers. Having standardized on Backstage, then they say, look, I don't want to have people pivot to yet another product because I want your experience, the workflows you provide as a platform, I want it backstage native. Just like we have a word cloud native, where you follow certain rules and it aligns with certain best practices and other things. And maybe there's a time for a term called backstage native, which means you're following certain patterns, things that users expect to see, developers, ah. platform teams, etc. So that's kind of the process we have followed. Backspa backstage, ba backstage native, native experiences. So it's yeah. like a native experience of backstage. Correct. Correct. And so it's building out of the backstage environment then to create Correct. the plugins? Correct. So what we have done is, I mean, our platform speaks many languages, right? Um, uh, we, we've, uh, the belief we have as a company is we, we cannot force organizations to speak our language. Rather, we should go speak their language. So if, ah. a, if an organization is aligned around backstage, let's speak their language, and which is kind of the genesis for why we said We'll start by bootstrapping organizations with curated plugins for very common use cases. The advantage that exists in the whole backstage and the CNCF community is we get to publish the source code, so everything is open source. It becomes like a fantastic building block for people to say, I understand how it works. It's backstage native. I can use it as is. Or maybe I'm getting inspired by what you built, and I'll build something based on that. Right? So that's kind of how the, the, the whole landscape seems to have evolved. And uh, you know, it's, 
it's for us, it's a tier one interface we support. And at some point, I'll show you, Alex, what it looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's check it out. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, let's do that. Thanks. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just chatting my screen here. This is an example of a backstage instance that we run and demonstrate to our customers all the time just to kind of help them understand what this looks like. And if you notice here, all these cards that you see here, all of these are instantiations of the, I mean, like a plugin is manifesting as templates. So if I'm a developer, I just log into Backstage, familiar territory for me. And then if I say I'm on Azure, right, and I want an AKS cluster, I get a self-service experience Why I can just choose that, give it a name, give it a description, and then keep going, right? I have a very curated, curated flow here. Uh, I can do what I want as, as a self-service experience as a developer. Now, the same thing, you want an environment which uh, has got nothing to do with Kubernetes, but I want an environment with a VPC, with a security group, with maybe an RDS database, but I'm not at Kubernetes yet. We can also do that uh, through these cards and templates that are available in Backstage. Um, this makes it a first-class experience for our customers to say, I'm going to take your stuff, introduce it to my users, and then they can also evolve this because the source code for this is open. Mm. Right? Uh, a larger the company, the more propensity they have and the ability they have to customize it to make it fit their flows better, right? Versus what we provide out of the box. So we see mm. uh, creating an AKS cluster, mm. um, creating an EKS cluster, mm. uh, creating a GKE mm. cluster. Are you also have. Uh, you know, create cluster from uh, templates. Correct. So there's all these different capabilities that you yeah. offer through the templates. Yeah. Take us through the template then yeah. itself. Yeah, let's do that. So, um, so here, for example, so the template, the whole concept behind templates is um, people want to give a curated, prescriptive workflow to the developers. Because in an average developer cares more about their application, they may not care about the infrastructure underneath. So what organizations land up saying is, look, I want to implement certain guardrails, and I want to make sure that developers don't shoot themselves and the company in the foot by maybe making the wrong selection of things they don't know. So the template allows them to basically set up these guardrails. right? And they may go and say, look, you don't need to go and mess around with the security settings or, or maybe the networking stuff, because those are not optional. They're mandatory for you. And then, you can go choose the kind of instances you want for the worker nodes. Uh, you can go choose the name of the cluster. We don't really care. And so the, it allows them to set up these degrees of freedom in the template. And, and that allows them to provide these insanely simple experiences for the user. Let's, let's, go, let's go try one, right? So let me, let me just go call this like demo new stack. And the name of the cluster that I want to give, which a developer, of course, cares about. And maybe I'll give a name, uh, an owner for that. Uh, these are tags that organizations may want to impose and say that, hey, when a resource comes up in a cloud, I don't want it to be an orphan resource. I want it to be attached to a person, someone who owns it. I hit next. Does it, uh, does hmm. it allocate hmm. um, the resources for the cluster too? Good, correct. It'll, it'll automatically do that as I go pick the template name, the template version, all these things. I just specify that. And then I, I say, you know, I, I want to provision this cluster in this AWS region or Google region or whatever. And then notice here in this, out of the three steps, as a developer, I didn't need to know anything about networking. I didn't, I didn't need to know anything about the instance types. I didn't need to know anything about, you know, what kind of add-ons need to be on the cluster. Did I need Istio or not? You know, this is an example we're showing where an organization, a platform team, can provide an extremely brutally simple experience for a developer whose only interest in life is I want to deploy my container and, and test it. Okay. Right? So that kind of a consumption model where it can be brutally simple is possible with uh, this cluster templates manifesting as a simple card in, in Backstage. Um, so we, as you can see here, we've kind of hidden, abstracted all these other things that you have to deal with in Rafe, which a platform team is familiar with, but okay. the developer does not care, does not need to know, but so all the, they see is this. So all this is, the developer basically gets, you know, this nice 
you know, these nice options. Yeah. With the card rails. Yeah. The platform team is monitoring. Exactly. Exactly. Who are you who are you talking to on the platform team? Are they SREs? Who are they? So usually we so we talk to both of them. We talk to both. So mm -hmm. what we're seeing in an organization is there's a a platform team is establishing standards. Um, like here's where here's how we want our clusters, here are the workflows we want to support. Uh, here are the kind of environments we want to support. Here's what a cluster needs to be looking like in my company. You know, this version of Kubernetes, these add-ons, etc. And then th they're standard setters. They they create the architect. I mean, the architecture looks like. And then the SRE team is usually downstream. They land up supporting the developers or application teams if something goes wrong. Or and, and of course, these two teams are intimately connected to each other. Right? One is downstream, the other. And uh, yeah, usually the teams that are architecting this, designing this at scale for a company. Uh, they are the ones that work with us, and the SRE team become daily users of the platform. I see, so mm. they're the daily users. Right. They're using this as part of their workflow. Correct. So they're watching the sprawl. They're making Correct. sure that there's not like too much going on. Correct, <clears throat> Correct. While also trying to mm. help, I would expect teams to make, they'll keep some autonomy too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So the experience you're seeing here as a developer, it's a first class experience as a developer. I, I'm given backstage where clusters are one among the 50 things that I may have access to through backstage, right? Some may have nothing to do with uh, Kubernetes or clusters or something else. It might be like, how do I go create, how do I do stuff in Redis, as an example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, that's the experience developers want because they want everything in one place. Because you know, in some ways, I look at backstage and customers tell me this is the uh, moral replacement, the re uh, equal and replacement of something like Confluence because the option before, before backstage was I got to write everything down. I got to document everything and put it in maybe Confluence, right? And it's too hard for people to read and keep up with all this documentation. Like the example you said where people just, the Spotify example that they couldn't yeah. keep up. Backstage becomes this living, implementable yeah. uh, replacement yeah. Yeah. of, of yeah. the documentation. Hmm. Okay, so what what else do you have to show us here hmm. outside of the template? Yeah, so hmm. uh, so clusters is one. Uh, now many are depending on the organization. You know, some some organizations do this thing like, hey, I'm going to give every team a namespace because everyone slices and dices yeah. these you know clusters different ways. Some people give a whole cluster. Uh, some companies decide, hey, I'm just going to give an application team a namespace. So in that case, you know, the you may not need to know the cluster, but you can say, hey, I can go create a namespace at will when I want in a self-service manner. No more wow. dealing with tickets, waiting for two weeks for a namespace to get created, right? I can go create a namespace, update it. I don't need to know the cluster. I just go create it on a on a target cluster through this thing. Or uh, the other one is a complete environment. Sometimes people need a full operating environment, like a cluster with an RDS database, with an S3 bucket. So this will also go execute the remaining Terraform along with that. If you have infrastructure as code, whether it's Terraform or Crossplane or Pulumi, one of those things, it can go build up the whole environment for you. Uh, so you don't have to wait for um, the team to come and build the rest for you, right? I see. Um, or mm -hmm. you can even do app deployments. So the workload here is an app deployment. If I want to very quickly go deploy an application to see how it works, and I don't have access to the cluster, and there are many developers who may simply want to go try an application to see how does that work? You know, like, does it work well with, it, with my test bed? And you can also do that in a self-service manner through uh, our card. So we kind of looked at the whole gamut of things that a it's platform team may want to expose to a developer and said, let's create curated plugins for these. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good building block, and sophisticated platform teams can then take the code and evolve it. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, I'm really interested in like this whole plugin model. Hmm. And so thank you very much, Mohan, for giving us a glimpse of what you're providing at Rafa. Oh, thank you, Alex. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.